This time I'm making a space dude from a toy. Let's go! I got this action figure from the secondhand shop for 200 yen. The soft plastic will get even softer with some heat. I'll just put the kettle on. And brew a quick cup of toy, I mean tea. Oh yeah, really squishy now. If you don't subscribe, the least you can do is smash the like button. <sighs> After cutting and trying to glue, I realized I had no idea what I was doing. Let's try that again. But before that, let me tell you what this video is all about. So many of you surely already watched David over at Dr. Toys. He makes all kind of cool custom art and toy stuff, like this little robot. We set up a challenge to make something in each other's style. He'll make a diecast custom and I'll modify a toy. It's perfect as we don't normally do these types of builds. There's also a twist at the end of the video, so make sure you watch to see what happens. Right. I found the only hard plastic action figures in Japan. Seriously though, almost everything is that strange soft vinyl material. These figures are amazing though, and the articulation is insane. The craftsman would love these. I started to break down the parts and brainstorm some customizations. The head needs replacing, and I found just the thing. This froggy alien guy. Sorry buddy. Much better. I drilled the neck and put in a peg. And then continued finding things to remove and change. This weird logo is a bit too identifiable, I guess. So I shaved it off and filed it smooth. The torso comes completely apart and I want to modify this belt area. Before getting too far and gluing, I hit the figure with a heat gun to make it more accepting of glue and paint. And with a slice of this styrene rod and a piece of wire, the belt is dressed up a little more. I filled in a peg hole on the waist and I added a vent to the back and I also decided on a pose. Oh, and I added a little friend and some rubble. I put super glue into all the joints to save this pose before moving on. Time to get handsy. Hands. Small hands. Gundam hands, but 90% smaller. <laughs> so specific. Anyway, these ended up being the perfect size to replace the boring, unrealistic hands that the figure came with. This wrist connector was a nice snug fit. Though the back plate was too plain and bulky, so I just removed it. There were three different hand poses and I decided on a finger perch for the crow buddy. And a closed grip on the right hand side. This will be wrapped around a staff, so I need to drill through the center. I'm gonna use two millimeter brass rod. This will make the staff, but it will also act as a support for the figure on the base. These plain knees and elbows are really bothering me, so let's cover them up. Elbows first. I'll come back to the knees when I can actually find something that works. I sliced some thin EVA craft foam for the lower leg area and I glued it on.
the back where the cape was got filled and I made a new cape that was tattered and would show more detail through, like the vent I added earlier. This is just made from some paper and solidified with paint. I thought blue would be a good accent and contrast with the base color. I painted the raven and I found some bits to add to the staff. It'll be simple and sleek. Hey look, Star Wars! I found the perfect bits for the knees. After carefully taking these round greeblies off, I glued them in place and dusted everything off to go prime it all. Now, for the base, I wanted to try out a new paint I got. It's from Games Workshop for Warhammer 40k, and it cracks when it dries, so it's pretty good for dry earth. I used a heat gun to speed up the process. I sprayed the tech kipple with silver and a touch of yellow gold to warm it up a bit. And then I gave it all a black wash. Now the head is the only organic part of this build, and I wanted to get an amphibian kind of look with brown and light tan speckles. I think it came out pretty nice, and being small, it didn't take too long to add the detail. I finished him up with all black eyes. Black doll's eyes. Before moving on to his suit. Some of the suit got matte metallic burnt iron, and other parts just got Tamiya panel liner over the base blue-gray. There were a lot of ridge details that took the pinwash nicely. I glued on his feathered friend and his well-worn cape before drilling into the base. I painted the rim of the base matte black, touched up the spear with primer, then some blue glow and silver. And using some crushed pastel from the dollar store, I added dust to mesh it all together. Here's the twist I mentioned at the start of the video. Dave and I are making these builds, and then we're sending them to each other. We didn't share any work in progress pictures with each other or anywhere else, so it'll be a complete surprise. Let's get this guy sent over to America. I hope he likes it. While we wait for Dave's build to get here, I want to thank my direct supporters on Patreon. Look at these wonderful people. We got Jimmy G, we got Adam, there's Andrew Price, Michael Dotty, Spaghetti a la mode, Harker, Kitch, Paul Bechtel, and of course these dollar store enablers. I also want to thank my newest patron, Gamey Builds, John Stamosification, and JC Hayes. Thank you all so much. Now let's open up this package from America. This challenge was so much fun. And it was great to step outside my comfort zone to work on an action figure. Awesome stickers. Let's take a look. Oh, it's so cool, but you guys got to check this out on his channel. Go click the link in the description and see the awesome job that he did on this build. I'll have to do a short or something to show this baby off. It'll definitely be on my Instagram too. Go create something and I will see you on the next build.